Well, folks, it's halfway through Friday the 13th. I managed to get my bike into the back garden without dropping it or bending the cans on the corner of my house or whatever. Uh, I've not taken it back yet, though, to come to think about it. This modification has been done by plenty of people before, but I'm going to outline how I've done it. And uh, it's basically to replace the stock chain adjuster. Now, looking at that picture there, I don't think anybody could say that is a thing of beauty. I modified mine and put a stainless threaded bar in and a couple of stainless flange nuts, you know. Um, it's not exactly pretty, nor I think is it particularly accurate when you're pulling your, adjusting your chain. It's very difficult to see the lines, as you can see on inside that block there. Um, that goes into the swinging arm you've got a little mark and you've got those grooves which are tricky so I've bought a Stratus Performance Chain Tensioner Kit and it arrived 24 hours later in a box now this kit's about 90 quid on eBay um, and about six or seven pounds delivery now one could say shock horror you know 90 quid my word but when you look at what's involved with the manufacture of this um, I'm not surprised and it's worth it to me so I'll run by exactly what's in the box unboxing it and then fitting it it took me 20 minutes to do um, so inside the box you've got instructions fairly self-evident there's a few QR codes on the actual um, instruction sheet as you'll see in the next photo and basically what you're doing is removing the rear axle pulling out the chain tension the existing stock chain tensioners uh, and putting those um, aluminium blocks in and I'll show in this video now how I did it so there it is there's the instructions <coughs> it's um, Got the QR code for other products. Um, it turned up, as I say, within 24 hours, which is great. And it's not difficult to fit at all, actually. If you, uh, if you follow what I've done here, it might make it easier for you. So there's the instructions and the, each individual component is well wrapped inside in bubble wrap. I mean, obviously, when you're spending a reasonable amount of money on any form of kit, you know, you want it to be packaged properly, don't you? And um, hence my going on about bubble wrap and so on. It means that you get the bits in nice condition. So it's faultless on, uh, on packaging. Each individual component is then um, polythene wrapped as well. So this next picture shows the two end plates which go into the end of the swinging arm. They have a hole in them to put a stainless star bolt in. So there's the actual end plates. So when mounting those, the holes, the um, countersunk holes, they face, they're at the bottom, obviously, so SP is facing upwards. So there, it's a complete replacement for, this, for the standard um, bracket, well, not brackets, you know what I mean, um, what do you call them? I don't know, tensioners. Um, so there it is in the polythene. And then slicing merrily into that carefully with my Stanley knife. There you go. Now they're, you know, they're highly polished. You can choose different colours. So people, you can have, you know, a gold end plate. Um, you can have different coloured blocks that go inside the swinging arm. I've gone for alloy raw as, it, as um, it's called on the ebay listing so i can see the lines better and i don't have any goldy stuff on my bike so I, I wanted the polished aluminium ones but as i say they do come in a, a combinations of colors that's the other face of it now the machining on it is absolutely excellent on that the fit um into the end of the swinging arm is completely perfect there's no slack in it whatsoever 
obviously you can see machining marks on the, the bit that's been um, machined out in the middle, but that doesn't matter because you don't see that, obviously. But the main thing is that the tolerance is absolutely bang on. So this is the actual blocks. So you've got two replacement axle washers, which are stainless steel, and basically ditch the stock ones because those washers that come with this kit um, are a lot more precise when lining, getting the little lines lined up to make sure that the wheel is equally tensioned on either side in the swinging arm. Um, if you look at those blocks there, you've got like a, a the top of that left hand side one, you've got like a peg sticking out on the right and then you've got a thicker peg at the bottom. They are just effectively spacers. That front one is a spacer to hold hold up the block and the rear one is the threaded hole into which go the star bolts and that is what accomplishes the tensioning. So included is some Loctite, you know, thread lock and the purpose of that is purely to stop those those star bolts coming out really. I mean once you've tensioned your chain and tightened up the axle nothing's going to move but you don't want those blocks um, you know the, the star bolts I suppose vibrating out. You can put tension on them once you've tightened your axle but a bit of thread lock just to be sure. That's the other side now that's you know that's been hewn out from a block of aluminium it looks like a doll's house kitchen sink with a drainer to my odd eye um, but it's obviously there's a lot of work goes into making these they're also light weight so as you can see there you've got your peg at the front the bottom of the picture that's just literally lifts it lifts it up and make sure it sits right in the swinging arm and the one at the back has got a, a same little wedgy pointy thing hasn't it so that just makes it sit and they're an absolute perfect fit they're not too loose they're not too tight they went straight in um, you'll find at the back end of the swinging arm you'll see it in some photos in a minute there are each each of the arms of the swinging arm underneath has a round hole don't be misled into thinking anything's got to locate into that it doesn't those holes I believe are just drainage actually um, I, I renovated a, a Yamaha XV250 that had the same sort of box section type swinging arm it didn't have drain holes and basically it rotted from the inside out so I think the two round holes that you'll see in so subsequent pictures are just purely drainage but don't there's nothing needs to line up with them they just um, you know the, the, the actual Stratus performance doesn't use those holes at all so there it is the washers the screw lock a couple of views of the of the blocks there now they, they're in size you know grooved on both sides um, so you know in a sense they're interchangeable you can't there's not a left and a right one which is quite a clever move really to have uh, machined them on both sides so those lines are obviously very precisely engineered um, nice piece of work I think so basically what you've got to do is um, remove your rear axle now what I've done um, well I'll show you in subsequent pictures but this next picture shows again a couple of views of the of the stock chain tensioning you know so if you look at that you can't really see the lines next to the axle for, for lining up the each side you can't really see them because they're black and manky um, my modification there with two flange nuts makes it look even worse <laughs> but at least they don't rust um, Needless to say, I've taken them off to recycle them and use them on something else. So here's here's another view, um, again of the stock system. You know, to me it's a bit bicycle-ish. It reminds me of something on a push bike. Um, I've never liked it to be honest. So what I did was I got a ratchet strap covered my seat fairing with a tea towel and then I put a ratchet strap around it to, to basically hold the wheel up rather than putting a block of wood underneath and um, so if you look at this picture here 
and all I did was just put a ratchet strap round a couple of times through the wheel. Try to get it absolutely perpendicular, the actual ratchet strap, so it doesn't try to pull the wheel one side or the other. And it, it actually was easy. I would describe it as easy. The last time I took my wheel off, um, I was doing something, I can't remember what it was, not that long ago, and I had a devil of a job putting everything back together with spacers dropping out, and people have commented on my channel that, you know, what a nightmare when you drop your spacer and using chain grease to make it stick inside the oil seal and then it plonks out when you're trying to get your axle through. Well, by just putting a ratchet strap around, everything stayed in place. I had to align it slightly when putting the axle back in, but it sure as heck made it much easier. And that is, um, somebody posted a comment on my channel recently um, and said, you know, I used a ratchet strap. Great idea. Um, so if it was you, you get extra points on that one make life a lot easier. So I wrapped it round a few times and then just tensioned it a little bit and held it in place. And then the next step is to obviously get a socket set. I don't use big open-ended spanners, you know, adjustable spanners. I think they're awful things because they, they're never right and they damage nuts. So I always use my trusty Halfords, Halfords no less, socket set made in Malaysia. I've had it 40 years, this thing. 40 years, that socket set. And in that time, I've only bought two replacement sockets, which uh, cracked through, you know, I think it was 13 and 14 mil. So there it is. There is a Malaysian-made Halford socket set. So you wouldn't do that big nut, which in my case is stainless steel, bought from China, because it's got a metric fine thread on it, and it's a, it's a very big diameter, as we know. And then it's a question of pulling out the axle. Um, so the axle on that picture now, I've pulled it out left to right, as you can see. So there's that hole where the axle would actually went. So this next picture, you'll, you'll find if you get a pair of pliers on the end of your stock chain tensioner, you know, around the nut on it or whatever and just pull it or give it a tap or whatever with a hammer holding it it'll it'll pop out the little plastic ends that um, the stock tensioners have got that fit into the end of the swinging arm they need a bit of a pull and that's what you get so it's a plastic end and the way that if you look at that um, tensioner there it's got like a leg on the top of it. It's got like a wing sticking out, hasn't it? That, that's what makes it sit correctly in the swinging arm. Whereas on the Stratus Performance ones, you've got those two nice um, pointy wedge things that enable it to sit straight front and rear. So it's, it's doubly supported on the Stratus Performance. I'm impressed by the design. I mean, I presume Luke invented this. It's, uh, it's a damn good idea. So there is the pair. Now, as you can see, you know, it's difficult to see the lines with them being black. They're only mild steel. They're sort of bent over those wings. Um, the, round, the, the, the axle hole is actually a, a tube welded in between those plates. So they've basically got a piece of metal and bent it round in a U and then welded a tube to each so they're not exactly high tech I mean what you know we're not expecting miracles are we so here's a comparison so I think <laughs> well I doubt anybody could deny that the the Stratus ones are uh, very very much more attractive than the stock ones if anybody does come back and say, well, I think the stock ones look better, um, well, I'll be speechless for once. So there it is. You've got your thread lock, the two new washers, um, the polished end plates, in my case, silver, you know, polished aluminium, and my blocks are silver as well, but you can get those gold and different colours. Um, and then it's a case of you put the blocks in, now you can see the holes I mentioned earlier. See there's a hole in the swinging arm. You can see it there. Well, that has nothing to do with the chain, the Stratus chain tensioner. Don't be misguided into thinking, oh yeah, something sits in that hole. It doesn't. 
it's a drain hole. In my opinion, that is 100% a drain hole for letting water out the swinging arm. I don't know how the water would get in there, but it should, certainly did on that XV250 and rotted it from the inside out. And, to be honest, it was the same on my um, Pan-European, which I had to weld and get powder coated. So ignore those holes. So there's the, the block. You just basically give them a firm pressure to put them in. Um, I needed to tap them with the plastic end of a, a screwdriver, you know, to itch them up a bit inside there. And, you know, as I say, they're, they're a good fit. You don't want them loose anyway. The, the stock ones are very loose. They waggle up and down, um, but these don't. So this next picture shows sliding the axle back in. And obviously the wheel stayed just about within two or three mil of where it was when I pulled the axle out. So no mucking about this time with spacers dropping all over the place. So there is the axle now going back in. You can see it's going through the block, chain tensioner block, through the new washer. And at this stage, I haven't actually put the tensioning plate on with a star bolt. So that is the mechanism. The mechanism is it's pretty obvious, but you know, you tighten um, the star bolt and it's the, the bolt is going into a threaded bit on the block inside and it just pulls it backwards. Um, or if you need to do it the other way, you undo it and bash your wheel a bit. So this is the axle coming out the other side. So then I've got my stainless nut and the new washer on. And I think the ratchet strap idea is fantastic. It's so much better than using the block of wood under the wheel because there's a tendency for the wheel to roll um, if you put a piece of wood under it. I've done that plenty of times and the wheel moves, whereas this ratchet strap idea is really good. So there you have it, that's that bit done. Um, it's then a case of making sure that those lines either side are the same number of um, lines so that the wheel was actually aligned correctly so there's another view of that block in place with the axle through it you can see the threaded hole at the bottom for the star key or star bolt um, and the thread lock is quite obvious it's not it's not you don't need thread lock to hold your axle on obviously because um, you're going to tighten that axle up properly the thread lock is is purely as it says on the instructions actually it's just to you know, re reduce the risk of it coming out the back end. But once you've tightened the axle up, you can then tighten that star bolt up a bit more. So it's sort of, it's under, you know, a lot more um, pressure as it were. But a bit of that stuff on it just holds it in place. And it, it, obviously it won't stop it turning in the future. It's not gonna be a permanent, a bit like that, I think Loctite Red is it, where you need to apply heat to break the seal. So it's not like that. Because obviously you're gonna need to unscrew it again at some point. So here is the um, star bolt in place now, loosely. And already that rear end is looking a lot tidier, in my humble opinion. So it's just a case of getting the right sized star bit and checking the chain, chain tension obviously and getting them lined up. So these next few shots show, show exactly that. I'm thinking of actually doing a competition again. I might, I'm thinking of doing a competition where you can win one of these chain tensioner kits. What do you reckon? So there it is. You can clearly see those lines now on the block, can't you? Uh, inside that sort of little, uh, you know, window in the side of the swinging arm they're much more visible than when they were black and they're a lot more precisely cut as well I noticed the grooves on the stock tensioners are quite wide and imprecise so this next shot shows the wheel now tensioned actually I've tightened up the the axle and there it is so you can count the number of grooves from the the new washer backwards say so there you've got one two three four and a bit lines from the edge of the washer to the end of that little window 
four and a bit. One, two, yeah, four and a bit. And it's just a case, same as any normal, you know, any chain tensioner, you want to make sure that your wheel is aligned correctly. This is the other side. So one, two, three, four and a bit from the new washer. I think it's good that the kit includes washers. I wasn't sure when I first, I saw it on eBay, they looked like, I thought they were crush washers, it was just the picture. They looked like they were crush washers, and I thought, well, you want one of those on your rear axle, but it's not, they're uh, nice quality. So these last few picks now just show the, the end product. So it's about 20 minutes to do that. You can see the precision fit of the end plate. And there it is. A few more shots. And then I'll uh, end this video with a sort of full rear end shot. There you go. Isn't that neat? Great idea. Love it. No more sticky out bolt with my flange nuts on it. And I know that the stock ones rust because my other ones did. And like I say, they're on eBay. I went onto Stratus Performance website, but it said out of stock. But then they were available on eBay, so it's probably selling via eBay, I think, uh, rather than through the website, possibly. So there it is, nice and tidy. Nice and shiny. Clearly visible lines, which means you can tighten your chain more accurately because you can see them. And this final shot is full rear end. Here we go. Isn't that nice? I think it is. So, as I say, you can have them gold if you want. Whatever. So there's obviously a fair old bit of work goes into making them. I'm not surprised that they cost 90 quid, to be honest. Nothing's cheap these days, and precision stuff isn't either, justifiably so. So there we have it, I've done it. Um, my friend Len's done it, except he's got the gold ones. And uh, I hope that helps people. In the meantime, it's still Friday the 13th. I don't know if I'm gonna take my bike back to the garage now. I'm, I feel like I'm gonna drop it. I might just have to leave it outside locked up overnight until a safe day. In the meantime, superstitious or not, I hope you're being careful on your bikes and I'll speak to you again soon. Bye for now.